your help is needed. Please call, please email, and please do it on Monday while we're doing our knock and shock. Today, we're fortunate to be joined by Mr. Pat Holland from the Missouri Freedom Initiative. There is a wave of legislation taking root across the country to allow citizens on a state-by-state -state basis to reclaim their right to use gold and silver as legal tender. This is a grassroots movement that's, again, taking hold throughout the country, but it's only happening with the work of people like you. In Missouri, we're nearing the home stretch. There's about one week left, and Pat needs your help. He has a call to action, something you can do on a personal level to help further this legislation. I'm going to let Pat tell you all about that. Pat, welcome back to Ron's Basement. Hey, Ron, thank you so much for having me back. I'd like to say hello to Smitty, too. He's got to be feeling the pain <laughs> right now. Uh, Silver, you know, we're recording this on Friday, by the way, at 10 o'clock or 1030 in the morning. And uh, Silver is being punished right now. Absolutely yes. punished. Well, and because of, course, of great jobs numbers. Right? That's I mean, correct. You know, the economy is so strong, Pat. Are you talking about the same jobs numbers? They'll be revising downward next month while they introduce the new exaggerated job numbers for next month. Is uh, are those the ones you're talking about? As long as, as long as month by month they look good, they can always, you know, take some from the previous months and move them forward. Right? Yeah, but the problem is when they revise them down, I never see it highlighted on the news websites. It, they just, right. it's some, it's like on page 10, you know, and like, you know, uh, oh, like eight point font or something. Right. Oh, no, so by the way, uh, that that's number right. we gave you last month uh, was bogus. Was wrong. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, uh, but I want to thank you again for having me back. And Smitty, hang in there, buddy. Your day's yeah. coming. Smitty, um, Smitty's here. And the gold bear, by the way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, he wants he wants all our viewers to do what you're going to recommend. Right. Or gotcha. He's going to be mad. So yeah. Okay. Want the, we gotcha. Don't want the gold bear mad at. You. No. No. Don't poke the gold bear. Right. You know, but apparently you can b blindfold them and handcuff them. You just can't poke them. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm still thinking you got thumb screws somewhere, you know, especially with what the Comex has been doing to gold, you know. So, yeah. all right. Imagine, uh, imagine what you don't see in my basement. Pat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that. You probably right. put a Kansas City Chiefs hat, oh, oh, a Minnesota Vikings hat on them. Ooh. Right. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I say that because, jokingly because that's where I'm from is Minnesota originally transplant. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey gang, um, uh, while you're watching this video, uh, we are actually assembling in Jefferson City right now for what we call knock and shock. We're doing a final push with a new flyer uh, talking about the devastating impacts of a digital currency in countries like China and how they lock their people down with tyranny, all kinds of tyranny. In fact, we could go through all the different brands of tyranny that come with a digital currency, but we have talked about the benefits with the General Assembly in the state of Minnesota ad nauseum. I mean, we've been doing that since, you know, the General Assembly started on January 4th, but it's time to, to put the fear of God in them, I think, and let them know the kind of tyranny that they have planned. And so here's what I would like if, if your viewers who are in the state of Missouri would be so inclined to help us out. Uh, start calling. It'll be down in the description section below. It would be Speaker of the House. His name is Dean Plocker. And then uh, also the majority floor leader. His name is John Patterson. And then also your representative. So whoever that may be. So down in the description section, we'll have everything linked up for you to be able to uh, get the emails and phone numbers of these folks. I would prefer phone calls before emails, but if you can't do a phone call, an email would be great too. And I'm asking people to do this on Monday while we're actually doing the knock and shock, while we're actually going door to door in the Capitol, talking to representatives and senators. We're going to hit senators on this one, too. There's one week left of session, gang. Let me set the stage for you. Almost no legislation has gone through this year because they're squabbling between the right and the left and the in the partial right, you know, who we call rhinos over IP initiative reform, which I'm not going to get into right now. It's just, it's a high priority for them. This has to do with ballot initiatives and how they're conducted in the state of Missouri, how we can alter our constitution and the budget. Those are the two things. One week left of session. You know, keep in mind, we pass about 120, 130 bills every year out of about 4,000 that are presented. So you got to be popular. 
you got to have notice to get your bill even to that to that point where it, it it possibly could be passed and we have done that thanks to you know ron's you know uh, basement viewers and the uh, missouri freedom initiative and many other organizations missouri freedom foundation uh, informed health choice in missouri there's a lot of people that have been helping with this sb 100 effort so like i said originally if anyone stands up and said i did this shame on you because a lot of people have worked on this um, but what we need to do is keep it fresh in their minds uh, in the final, final week of legislation, because when this traffic jam finally ends, when they've got IP initiative where they want it, where God only knows where that is anyway, but, and when they got the budget down, the squabbling, there's a huge uh, differential between the House budget and the Senate budget, and they've got to figure that out, you know, compromise. Um, then they'll move to regular bills. And when that happens, it happens fast, very, very fast. I mean, you know, 0.5 beyond light speed, like the Millennium Falcon fast. That's what they do. And this traffic jam happens every year, but it's never gone this close to the end of session in my memory. So, so I think things will move even faster than they have in the past once they clear the traffic jam. Your help is needed. Please call. Please email and please do it on Monday while we're doing our knock and shock. And in fact, if we're if we can figure out a way to do it, I wouldn't mind giving um, if Ron, you know, this is kind of on the spot stuff, Ron, I hate doing this to you. If we can figure out a way to do something live where I can f uh, feed Ron some data, if you want to do a live stream during that time and have me on the phone and I'll kind of let you know what we're doing, what we're up against, what the reception is you know, for what we're doing for knock and shock on Monday. I'd love to do that with you, even if it's only a five or a 10 minute update on a live stream. Yeah, yeah. Because this great. is critical, gang. This is incredibly important that Missouri get this and the other states that have legislation get their legislation done as well. This is critical stuff. This isn't, so, so, go ahead. Th this is gold and I'm going to remind everyone, this is the gold and silver legal tender legislation in Missouri that would allow you to use gold and silver, reclaim your rights, your constitutional rights. Pat's going to be there on Monday, door to door at the state capitol, talking to the legislators. What he's asking is that you call or email that that you do your part and uh, and 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 know that you know that grassroots, that community involvement does make a difference in state politics. It does. It absolutely does. In fact, uh, we're on the radar, gang. I mean, don't misunderstand me on this. We're on the radar. But because there's so little time left, we need to be noticed more than any other bill. That's what it really comes down to. We need to have the most activity around our bill. We need more activity around our bill than anyone else has around their bill. So we can rise to the top. We can be the cream to make sure that they're not looking at us on Thursday or Friday of next week when there's no time left to go to conference. There's no time left to pass it. And unfortunately, a lot of bills get done that way. Uh, we need immediate attention. As soon as they're done with their IP initiative and budget, you know, we need to be in the top five bills that they look at. And the deadline, the deadline is a week Friday. from today, right? Friday, May, that's May correct. 12th. May 12th at 6 p.m. is the okay. end of the, uh, the actual legislative year for the General Assembly in the state of Missouri. What and about we, the, what about the tone of the emails and the calls? Do positive, be, okay. positive and friendly. Absolutely. Because uh, be, being angry or aggressive gets you nowhere in Jefferson City. Believe me, that is the case. Uh, so positive and friendly and supportive of SB 100. In fact, if you wanted to write an email or make a phone call, just say, you know, especially to Dean Plocker and, and John Patterson, you would say, you know, we really, really need you guys to wear the red cape for us. We need you to come in and get this done for us. And you will be everybody's hero. Mm -hmm. You know, language like that, you know, they, they love that. So they, lo they love being called heroes, huh? Yeah. The, well, you know, it's uh, politicians. They have egos <laughs> that need to be, you know, stoked, you know, and, you know, and, 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 and pet, like, you know, your dog or your cat. <laughs> uh, you know, well, for, for what it, for what it's worth, uh, Smitty, the silver bear, you, Pat Holland are his hero. So there you go. Okay, cool. And then Smitty's mine too. So, yeah. you know, it's a mutual admiration societies thing we have going on here. 
First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada, Spring Pole in Ontario and Du Parquet, located in Quebec. Each already has 5 million ounces of gold reserves, but exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects. And you um, said something earlier I want to I want to touch on. Sure. You said no one individual can take credit for the legislation in Missouri or even you know any of the other states. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, uh, and I know you won't take credit, and I know there are a lot of other people that are highly involved, but you have worked tirelessly on this. And I know that you've sacrificed a lot personally, uh, and I wanted to recognize that for the viewers that that uh, that you've given up a lot to uh, to help further this legislation. Well, I appreciate that, but I'll, I'll point out something else to you: is if I were a lone man, you right. know, doing this and put in the same energy, it wouldn't get done. It's right. literally the grassroots. It's the people that get involved that give it a large voice. Yeah. You know, you know, because you can roar when you're a mouse, I'm sure. But when you roar like a lion, it's it's heard better and it's it's received better. Yeah, strength uh, in numbers. That's correct. And yeah. that's what we get when we get a lot of people involved in a very important legislation. And this isn't the first time we've done this, but this is on gold and silver. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wanna stress again, this is the only, the only constitutional option to the digital dollar, which is coming down the pike. Fed now starts sometime in July. And it's not going to be you that they start with. It's going to be businesses. They got to get businesses on board. We have the same philosophy with SB 100. That's why we're going for legal tender. We have to get businesses on board with gold and silver. So it's not that, you know, SB 100 is the smartest piece of legislation. No, we, we, the Fed understands this too. They need to get businesses on board too, in order to make uh, the, the digital dollar work. We're competing for the same audience, if you will, businesses. What are they comfortable doing? Do they wanna start con uh, transacting in forms of gold and silver? And it doesn't necessarily have to be physical. It can be electronic, it can be gold backs, you know, it can be coins, you know, whatever they wanna do. But the free market must, must be allowed to flourish with their solutions. We do not want regulation on gold and silver from the state of Missouri. And that's another thing that SB 100 does. There's no regulations in there, apart from the fact that the state must accept gold and silver if offered for payment of taxes and services to the state of Missouri. So your help will definitely, definitely, uh, let's just say be favorable to getting this done because we have got to stay fresh in everyone's minds. We've got to, and I'm gonna, uh, the flyer that I'll be putting out for this particular knock and shock is a little different. Uh, from the flyers that have done the past, which sell the bill. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. I was selling the bill. Now I have to, you know, start putting a little bit of fear in some of these legislators about what's coming down the pike with the digital dollar. And I don't need to tell your audience this. Your audience is smart. They know this. They're probably watching what's going on in China right now. How you can extract freedom from a society literally by forcing everyone on a digital currency that's tied to social credit scoring. It's really that simple. No more freedom of speech. It's just gone. Privacy, gone. You know, basically your right to travel can be restricted. You know, my gosh, certainly don't be critical of Biden and your, your social media. You know, otherwise, you know, they'll start hammering you on your digital wallet. I mean, we can go through and, and, and any president who comes after him by the way. So I'm not going to just pick on Biden here. Right. Um, but we have to have this. This is the self-defense mechanism that the founding fathers gave us from day one. Conduct your business in physical gold and silver. And you're the gold and silver channel. And your folks know about gold and silver. And uh, like I said, until June, I'm asking everyone to, to literally uh, change the brain patterns from getting rich in gold and silver to just surviving and not having to deal with the digital dollar, having us an escape hatch, a lifeboat, a way out of that completely tyrannical system that the Chinese are test marketing for the entire world right now. And gosh darn it, when you hear stuff from business leaders in the United States saying, oh, China's got this wonderful model, you know, for how business is conducted and how, how transactions occur, that should scare you. <laughs> it should just literally scare you. Uh, you know, when you have Tim Cook with Apple 
praising China all the time, that should scare you. Yeah. Yeah. When you, you have wanna, Bill Gates. If you, want, if you want to protect your freedom, you want to protect your rights. If you want to, uh, nothing else, if you're a, an, an enthusiast with precious metals, you understand uh, the value of holding physical metals. And if you want to protect even that right, then you need to support legislation like SB 100. Is, sure. that, is that safe to say? Yes, that's safe to say. And uh, one more thing I'd love to say is the bank failures have never stopped, gang. Yeah. The fact that the Federal Reserve and Biden are saying oh, the banking system is sound, that doesn't make it sound. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry if some of you didn't know that before, but uh, regional banks are still failing. And, you know, uh, the ramifications of uh, First Republic, you know, are, are we, we don't even know that. It's going to take a couple of weeks until we find that out, but that's mm -hmm. going to take down other banks. Guys, this is the way it works. They have derivative packages, and they, it ties all the banks together. It's the tethers, the mooring, in the, and holding all the banks up. And when one bank fails, they have derivatives that are tied to other derivatives that are owned by other banks. Suddenly, those derivative values go down to zero. And the balance sheet looks very different in a bank when their derivative investments go to zero. That's what's happening, I think. I think yeah. bonds have a lot to do with it, too. They need liquidity right now, Ron. And the Fed window, I'm sorry, the repo window, for some reason, is not open to these regional banks. It's only open to the big six member banks, mm -hmm. right? I uh, why. So. Yeah, that's called fascism, gang. You know, a, a government should not be picking the winners and losers, but they do it all the time. And this is uh, un-American. It's unpatriotic. And it certainly is fascist. The original version of the word fascist, which was somehow changed in our dictionaries, if you go back to a 1960s dictionary, fascism had a different meaning. What fascism, uh, uh, corny capitalism is what people use now. Here's what fascism is. It's when businesses and government join together in an unholy union that is against the will and the benefit of the people, but for the will and the benefit to the corporations and the government. That's what fascism is. And when you have the federal government picking what banks get to survive and what banks get to fail, you know, that's literally the government literally working with the banks to set up tyranny that we will all have to live with and endure through. Yeah. That's what's going on right now. It's not an immediately recognizable because, you know, we had bank bailouts in 2008. Everything turned out okay, right? Mm -hmm. Not so much. Um, we have a failing dollar right now. That's what they did. The, the compromise to save the banks in 2008 is exactly what we're dealing with right now. The world de-dollarizing. That is a real threat to the lifestyles of Americans, the, the power of business in America, you know, actually, and the price that we pay for anything that comes from outside of America. This will be a dramatic change and shift in America, and it may happen over a period of years, or it could be kind of sudden like it was in Venezuela, but the fact of the matter is it ain't good. Yeah. It's so not if good. You wanna, and will... if, you, if you want to protect yourself, right? I mean, you know, silver, gold, yep. uh, but yeah. also support the legislation. Thank, you know, thankfully we are seeing it, uh, uh, are, are experiencing this wave of legislation across the country, silver, gold, legal tender legislation. I've read this morning, I think North Carolina and Florida had passed anti-CBDC legislation. Yes. So I knew about so Florida. Yeah, I think North Carolina, don't quote me on that, but I'm 99% sure. States are, are uh, progressive states, I would call them, uh, in my view, are taking steps to uh, kind of protect themselves from mm -hmm. uh, the federal government overreach. Yeah, I, yeah and in fact, uh, I'll, I'll give you my opinion. I wouldn't call them progressive. I've called them, you know, traditionalist. Um, so... And, and you're absolutely right. Uh, the The digital dollar is what is coming, gang. I mean, honest to God, mm -hmm. the Fed Now program is literally uh, starting in July, and that will literally incorporate businesses into literally getting rid of cash. 
that's what it's, you know, we could talk about all the subtle nuances, you know, and all the tiny minutia involved with the Fed now program, because there's a lot to it. But ultimately, that's what it is, is to take us take cash completely away and stop using cash completely. Yeah. Once you get everyone's digital, they can easily switch over to the digital dollar. And, and that's what's going on. Anonymous transactions need not apply. The Federal Reserve doesn't want it. The federal government doesn't want it either because they feel that you're evading taxes. And if you, if you even watch stuff that we've done in Missouri, um, uh, the Democrats are worried about drug dealers avoiding taxes, apparently with gold and silver. Right. Well, we, but, we're seeing consolidation in the banking industry. Correct. Right? That's Everything, correct. Um, somebody uh, this morning I was talking to called uh, J.P. Morgan and Jamie Dimon, like a miniature Federal Reserve now, yes, basically. Pretty so much. you're having that level of consolidation. Then on a biz, big business level, you're having this transition into the CB, the initial transition into CBDC. It all kind of fits, right? So yes. it is important that, that people uh, take the call to action. If you're in Missouri, we're going to have the links in the description below and protect, protect yourself. Well, yeah. I'd like to even say this, you know, it, it's, it's not, you know, I can't overstate the importance of this, but I will tell you the last time in America that the people had a chance to stand up and decide what is money was 1912. That's it. 1912. Over 100 years ago. That's the last time. And we ended up going to a Federal Reserve note um, that was gold backed. And then uh, devalue, gold was devalued, you know, and then uh, the Bretton Wood Accords. And then finally, when we went off gold in 1971, it was fluctuated. It was between mm -hmm. six and nine percent uh, coverage with gold on the dollar. Wow. Now, we have a chance right now, a very slim opportunity right now to actually decide what is money without the government shoving tyranny down our throats with fascism with these banks. But you've got to stand up. This doesn't happen by itself. Gang, that's what happened in 1912. Uh, no one understood what was going on. So that, well, whatever the government wants to do, I guess. And well, all the states ratified it. Well, I didn't hear my state did, but okay, I guess the, the government doesn't lie. Right. So, yeah. um, so basically, I think at this point right now, this is your this is your time to stand up and be counted and let your voice be heard. Yeah. This is your time. And the time is rapidly closing. This window of opportunity is rapidly closing. So it, because the Fed now program is starting and uh, how fast will that go? How many businesses will sign on to that and stop taking cash? I don't know. I really don't know, but I do see it as a threat. We have to work together. We have to, uh, as citizens actually determine for ourselves and our families and for the future, is it a good idea to go the way China's going with uh, transactions, with the way money is handled, with uh, social credit scoring, with environmental uh, social governance? Are these good ideas? Is this what we want in America? The government and the banks say yes. What say you people? What say you? Whatever state you're in, let your legislators know what you feel about the FedNow program and the digital dollar. And do it now. The waiting or, you know, planning your phone call. We're talking a two minute phone call, you know, maybe spend five or 10 minutes on an email, but get it done. Do it's it. your turn. It's your do chance. It. It's your time. Go ahead. Do it or I'm going to sick the bear on you, right? Oh, yeah. You don't want the gold bear on you. No. you, know, you know. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Pat. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Ron, for letting we'll me give forward. this important yeah, announcement. You, you got it. The links are in the description below, and uh, we'll look forward to an update from you next week uh to, to see how things progress okay that'd be great okay thank you very much ron i appreciate your time and thank you everyone in ron's basement that's participating in this process you are the heroes thank you